Good morning, and welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach, and today is the first day that Uncle Jed is working full-time on the farm. So, it's already immediately paying off. Last night, well, I mean, we have storms every day. Seems down here in Eastern Kentucky at this time, so everything's wet. But there was obviously something going on in the farm. There was a disturbance, all the animals were a little extra jacked up. Daisy the cow was out. Um, which isn't good. And then now I look, and this is the second time Hank has done this, and I don't understand why. But I'm gonna get him out. But I got Jed doing the feed, so it's kinda nice, you know, I can fix this problem while the chores are being done. So somehow they got my, this line loose, kicked it up, and Hank, this is the second time he's gotten stuck in between our permanent fence and this fence, and then he doesn't know what to do. So we're gonna get him out. All right, Hank, what happened, man? Right, buddy. Come on. Hey. Don't be a dumb. You're gonna be a dumb man. Come on. Come on, Hank. Come on, buddy. Ah. Ah. There you go. See how much so hard one. And I go get you something to eat while I fix this fence. Go on, Hank. Go on. Ah. Okay, got that problem solved. Oh, Hank. Henry. Let's see, there's old Jed. He done finished off the goats already. Okay, morning chores are done for the most part. The feeding is done. Um, and Jed has already just been a huge asset. It's been great to have him. It's allowed me to have some more freedom to do things um, that aren't so rush, 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 get on your laptop, rush, rush, rush. So now um, we are in the garden. Y'all haven't got to see this forest in a minute. Um, one thing about all the rain that we've had, it's, it's, you know, a natural disaster on what is Eastern Kentucky's really facing. Um, so many towns are still underwater. So many families have nothing left. Um, the only, I guess light of this is everything is so alive all the plants all the trees everything is so green um, i don't think i've ever seen late august early late july early august look as it does right now um, and it's due to all the natural rain that we've had natural rain is such an important piece to your garden over hard water which is what's coming out of your tap the soft water just allows the plants to grow tremendously so I'm out here to give a little harvesting um, because we've been canning so much, it's y'all haven't been out here. So I was like, well, let's take them to at least do the harvest and show them a couple things that's happening in the garden. And then we'll try to get a, a full blown garden tour in the near future. So first things first, we have our first round of fall crops starting to sprout. So this is all cauliflower. This is all broccoli. This is all cabbage and this is all peas. So that's uh, some of the big guys that we need to get done. Next is gonna be your kales, lettuces, uh, probably some beets and maybe some turnips and some radishes and stuff like that. Um, but we're getting ready for that fall area. And I'm not kidding when I say the garden is just exploding. Like this is Lufa. Y'all remember the last time we saw Lufa? She little, so little. Our moringa tree right here is doing well that Melissa and Tyler gave us. The tomatoes are just, it looks like one big complete bush of tomatoes. Like it's nuts. Over here, the squash and zucchini are still just doing fantastic. Look at this. They're still huge, no squash bugs yet, and just doing amazing. The okra, which is one of the things we're going to be harvesting today, so big. Our pumpkins over here, they're just sprawling out everywhere. This is some of them that we got growing here. There's one big pumpkin right there growing. Got another one over here. It's just, it's a, it's a jungle and it's a very beautiful jungle. All right, I can't be wasting too much time. It's gonna get hot soon. Let's get to harvest. Here's the cucumbers. The harvest is starting to get lower and lower. Um, they're starting to die back a little bit, which is pretty natural for our time. I haven't really seen many cucumber beetles. I think it's literally, they've just kind of ran their course. Uh, cucumbers are kind of a quick hit, give you a bunch of stuff, but don't last an incredible amount of time. 
but we have gotten a lot of pickles i would still say in that harvest there's at least 30 pickles in there so that's pretty good um and just more first put back squash time Got a few more cucumbers in a different spot, quite a few okra, one ginormous zucchini, and finally some flipping peppers. Anybody else had a weird pepper year? Like our plants are looking amazing, but usually by this time we have just ran through so many peppers. Like we have peppers running out of our ears. This year, not much. Like I'm just now starting to get harvested and that's really weird, it's very late. And check this out, my first Mexican sunflower of the year. They're so far behind, but we're starting to finally get bushy. And they are going to be beautiful. I love Mexican sunflowers. So they bud out everywhere. And it's this beautiful orange flower, which that one's seen better days. But every time I'm out here, you know, I got to do a little clipping on some flowers to give mama a pretty bouquet. And here's my zinnia starting to really look pretty. I love this one. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's like a tie-dye paint thing. Looks like paint splatter. But we get quite a few going on here and several more to come. I know, it's wild. This is like me. Oh my god. <laughs> See, if I was editing, I would count this as like an all mute and play music over it, but you're putting a lot of good words on there yeah. that I said I can see Jen Kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wasn't ready. <laughs> well, he's starting to leave his things in a way. It means he's not ready. Okay. If it goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. If it well, wiggles around. Back and forth. No, if it wiggles around like that, it ain't ready. You're not going to cut down and make them the same size? Nope. I thought you were supposed to make them all the same. Yeah. I think the leaves off this. Yeah. It's prettier. You're getting washed up. Got my washed up. All right, so it is much later in the day. Looks weird. Last clip, it was set in activity. It's a like super high view. Let me know if it looks better or not. It is much later in the day now, and uh, we, Jen, got done homeschooling the kiddos. I've had to do some work, but most importantly, we were getting tinctures ready, which we'll be talking about here in a second. Uh, basically, mom got them all bottled yesterday, and then we had to create all new labels uh, so she could put them on there because they're brand new tinctures. They're also already on Etsy. They're very exciting. They are very exciting. So if you don't want to like wait for us to tell you whichever ones are, go ahead and pause now and go get you some because there's a bunch out there. What you need? Just a little bucket. <laughs> All right, what are we doing now? Okay, it's spaghetti sauce time again, and we only have a couple jars left from last year. So was that last year? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was, but it was like last fall, I think. Yeah. Maybe I don't remember. Dang. But it's time Dang. again, so we're gonna make our spaghetti sauce. Listen, it might not look like yours. I understand. Hold, hold. <laughs> this is not authentic Italian no, spaghetti not, sauce. Not Let's go all. ahead and get right this real never quick. Claimed, all right, back to you. <laughs> I never claimed that it was, and I'm claiming it again that it is not. I have no intention of being authentic Italian or cooking that way. So this is just my spaghetti sauce. What works? Um, the idea actually came from Rachel at 1870s Homestead. She inspired me to do this with all of the garden goodies that you get and not letting anything go to waste. And I'm here to tell you that it makes the best spaghetti sauce ever. We're picky about our spaghetti sauce, especially the kids. And even they You gonna make it over there? <laughs> <laughs> Take two. It's the kids' favorite too. So we're gonna make a whole lot more of it. So hopefully we can have enough till next year. Might have to do another round in the fall. We'll see when we still have veggies coming in, but let's do it. So we will not give you every detail here. Um, I will link the full video down below. It's just all about making the spaghetti sauce. And if you follow us on Facebook, you know where that disclaimer came from about the Italian sauce. Um, that video was also posted there and the Italians came on attack. <laughs> so if you're Italian, we apologize. We never implied for this to be authentic. No, I'm it, sorry that it offended everyone. <laughs> that was an assumption that yeah. a lot of people took. We never said it. So. This is good spaghetti sauce though. Like she said, it takes up a lot of garden veggies. As as you see right now, she's cutting up zucchini. 
Um, and I don't think she emphasized enough that our kids enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So if your kids are used to store-bought spaghetti sauce, you know what we mean. That stuff is so full of sugar yeah. that it's basically not even spaghetti sauce. It's basically sugar sauce. Um, so being able to have something that is homegrown, homemade, that your kids enjoy over the store-bought, it's really great and something that you should definitely try. And so. there will be sugar in here. But yeah. For the amount that you're seeing, the amount of sugar that I'm going to put in is nowhere close to the amount that's in the store-bought stuff. So right. Just keep that in mind. Right, because it's going to look like a lot, but we're going to fill up that entire turkey roaster full. It's how many quarts? It's 22 quarts. 22 quarts. And then that's going to be broken down into individual quarts. So what we're putting in here is going to be 22 quarts of spaghetti sauce. So anything that you see, think of it that way. It's going to be broken down amongst a bunch of jars. All right. Let's do this. So you get a bunch of zucchinis in there. You're gonna have squash. What we doing? Some onions. Onions. There's gonna be a whole lot more that goes into it. But for now, I'm just getting this stuff cut up. And then I have our frozen tomatoes. So these came at the beginning of the season, and it wasn't enough to start canning. So we just cored and scored everyone and started throwing them in freezer bags, and then we froze them. So this morning I set those out to thaw and we're also going to use a bunch of our fresh tomatoes that we have and just throw everything together and it's going to be amazing. I would say probably one of the best parts about this sauce is you don't have to peel the skins. Yes. Because you, you're going to emulsion blend all this down completely. Like of that, anything. Uh, yeah, of everything because yeah. it's going to be down to just sauce. So all that actually helps with your thickness yes. if you really want to get specific about it. Um, all those skins in there. There's a lot of nutrients on skins too. So. Another plus for this. Okay. Okay, we've got our tomatoes, we've got our zucchini, squash, and peppers. And onions. And onions all in the pot. Recipe is down below or in the video if you want to see specifics. But you don't have to make this the exact way that I do. You can make it any way you want to. You don't have to put zucchini and squash if you don't want to. If you just want to do tomatoes and all the other seasonings and stuff, you can do it that way. We like to do that because one, nothing goes to waste. Two, the kids get veggies and their spaghetti sauce so they don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is turn it on 325 for about four to five hours. So basically right before bed and then we'll come back and check it. Okay, so that she's cleaning up the mess that she made. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we made. <laughs> okay, so there's a bunch of new tinctures. I think there's seven, six or seven. I don't know. We're going to go through them and we're going to talk about them because it is on the description. Every single one explains what it does and how much you need to take. But I just like to put it out there. Um, I do have it in some of, them, some of them. It's in the parentheses. tells you what it's good for, but not all of them. But it's always in the description. So the first one is corn silk. Corn silk is awesome. Um, this is dried corn silk, obviously. You can use corn silk from the cob if you have an abundance of that. But this is dried and it's really good for strengthening your urinary system, so like UTIs, strengthening your bladder wall, and it's also good for bedwetting. So it's been recommended that you take it a few hours before bedtime, like three or four, and then that will help if you have any issues like that. Um, for adults, not for children. Next one is a mullen t-shirt, so it's mullen leaf. We love mullen. It's one of my favorite things. I always go out and get mullen in the yard whenever I wake up with any kind of cough or respiratory stuff. It's one of my favorite teas. Um, this, however, is a tincture, so it's a little Hang bit more on, potent. Let me tell the story real quick. You know your country when we have teas everywhere in this place. We have store-bought teas, we have homemade teas, all that good stuff. It's all in here. I woke up, she wakes up, she goes, hey, babe. My throat hurts a little bit. Can you go outside and go grab that mullen and <laughs> make me a tea out of it? I just kind of looked at it like, yeah, I guess I can. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. It always helps. Mullen is so wonderful. Not only is it nature's toilet paper, but it, it is wonderful for respiratory stuff. If you've got any kind of congestion or sore throat, um, any kind of heaviness in your chest, you can take this tincture and it will help you get all that up. It'll help suppress it, and it'll also help take away that pain. And so I will say, so a lot of a lot of tinctures have that respiratory stuff tagged to it, right? I would, and most of those I would say are preventative. This one yes. is more active. of a treatment, yes. right? Treatment while you have it, it helps um, in general. So I want to make that clarification for you. The next one is hawthorn leaf and flower. 
It's another awesome tincture, new one that we're doing. It's really good for improving your blood circulation, for high blood pressure, high cholesterol. So all those things that we all hate that happen to us, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's really good for that. So it's not so much a treatment, but if you take it every day, it can definitely help you. Um, don't go replacing your medicines. Always talk to your doctor first. Mm -hmm. That's my disclaimer on all these tinctures, on everything that we make, but it has been known to definitely help with that. So it can be a very good thing. The next one is peppermint tincture. Peppermint is awesome as teas or as all the things, but having it in a tincture form is really good. So a lot of people will take it after they eat their meals and it'll help aid with digestion. Now, this is a tincture, so don't go putting peppermint in your tea and <laughs> this tincture in your tea because it does have ficus and you might start your morning off differently than you want it to. <laughs> it's but, a very diluted ficus. Yes. It's a tincture. But it can definitely help with digestion. It's very, very good for your stomach. Yeah, and so I would say the best thing is like when you're, you get the bloat or you got different stuff like that, like that, this would be the time to take that. Or you feel overly full, it'll help. It just helps move things through. Yep. Yeah. The next one is marshmallow root tincture. Everybody loves marshmallow and marshmallow. Everybody's starting to find it in their yards and on their properties, and a lot of people are starting to grow it. It's really, really good for you, respiratory and digestive, and it's the root. So we all know that leaves and flowers and um, you know teas themselves are wonderful but when you can get to the root that really gives you where the good stuff is so that's what makes it so much more potent in a tincture and makes it work for all the respiratory and digestive stuff the next one is dandelion root tincture so very popular all of us homesteaders know that dandelion is not a weed it is literally the one thing that grows in our yard that can get rid of all of the medicines that everybody creates for us to be on for our hearts and our cholesterol and our blood pressure and, and all that drunk. stuff <laughs> but if we would just choose to use the dandelion we as americans would be so much healthy and okay. so much better off so with that being said dandelion root is amazing and now the leaves themselves and the flowers are awesome but again when you can get to the root that's where all of the major enzymes and all that good stuff is so making it into a t-shirt just makes it like literally a power super house food super tincture yes <laughs> so it's awesome for all of the heart stuff blood pressure cholesterol heart disease um, even digestion all of those good things and dandelion root tastes good yeah and i think i would rank it up there with like the burdock and the elderberry yes. like it's like you have all good and then you have like next level good and that would be dandelion root super food. second to last but not least <laughs> is valerian root so valerian is becoming very popular as herbs and it's really cool it's something that we've gotten into lately um, not so much before but now we're starting to realize all the benefits and it's really good so it's great for sleeping disorders adhd um, like chronic fatigue just overall tiredness boost your energy uh, helps you focus and then helps you get through a good night's sleep without having That's all a the really extra good one. stuff it's a great. It's a little different because you, you kind of see a common theme with a lot of tinctures. Some are a little bit better and some have a little bit more of the duels, but that's a that's a really different one that provides a lot of stuff that people need. I yeah. know that chronic fatigue. <laughs> <Get on that. laughs> I feel like we all have that, right? Right. I think we can all use some of this yeah. tincture in our body if we do any kind of home study. Yeah. Is that, was that it? Sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. Last but not least is sage leaf. It is a powerhouse. Everybody loves sage. If you're not growing sage, you should. Not just for cooking, but for medicinal purposes also. So it's antiviral, anti -ox antioxidant. She's got <laughs> zaconese today. <laughs> yes. I do. I have all those wonderful things. Sage leaf tincture is just one that you could take every day, not for a specific purpose, just to keep you healthy, um, keep antiviral um, properties in your body, and just all the good things. And it tastes good too. Yeah, it really does. It's very sweet ish, kind of. Mm -hmm. It's good.